Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokish here at the Garden of Freedom aboard No Force One, and I'm really excited about this video right now, talking about COVID-19 tests getting out, and I gotta start with a big shout out to Jacob Clark of the Kentucky Libertarian Party, who got us this test in the mail, the one-step test device from the Sober Stick, which has already been used in over 82 countries, comes with an alcohol swab, and a lancet for drawing a small blood sample. This is really exciting to be doing this video right now because we just got news from our friend Jacob that that link right there, you are going to be able to order this test kit yourself. This was originally denied by the FDA and I want to make sure I'm being accurate here. So it said that they originally were uh, not allowed Okay, that this test has been averse, available for over two months. There are a lot of fun lessons here, too. Not just, hey, practical, hey, if you want to get tested, if you want to, by the way, this test also tells you if you've gotten it and gotten over it. It's not just testing for the virus. It shows you separately a test for the antibodies as well. So, looks like my phone is being funny here. But it has been in effect, or it has been available for two months. The FDA, here it is. It was submitted to the CDC for review, but they denied the submission, stating that they did not see a need for it at this time. Now, I know there are a lot of conspiracy theories around this, and you, you know, never attribute to, to malice what can be adequately explained by incompetence, but here I think we do see uh, maybe not a concerted conspiracy, but we do see deliberate efforts to slow down our ability to respond to this virus with just the basic medical technology that we have available, that we're, we're not able to get uh, masks and gloves to healthcare professionals. I mean, it's just, it's insane that this is the problem that we have when it's, it's, it's this easy. And what, I, what I'm about to show you when I open this is just how simple this test is and, and how amazing we could be, uh, how much better we could be responding if we were able to get these out everywhere. So Doctors have been using this test to screen and self-diagnose while waiting for their lab results. And here's the other thing. This is 10 minutes. I'm going to be ranting more than we're going to be doing in this video. I'm, I'm introducing this and telling you guys all about the test and where I got it and where you can get yours. But the, the test itself is insanely simple. You take a, a blood prick, you put it on the strip, you add a, a, a saline solution as a buffer that, that sends it through the analysis, and you know within 10 minutes, and it's actually less than that as it usually takes, they say 10 minutes to be safe. So we're gonna time this out. But we've had people saying that they, they have to wait. Originally, what, what were we seeing in, in Dallas when we were trying to get tested? They said they weren't gonna test anybody uh, under 65. Two days. Yeah. Two days, and it's basically we're drawing either you know they do they do the the the, the swab you know and, and in in the nose, and they put it on a similar kind of test strip in a controlled environment, like it, that's that's it, and the delays of this are just absolutely insane. So I'm really excited. I'm hoping here that I do actually test positive for antibodies and not an active virus. That would be my ideal situation. That's that's the outcome anybody as an individual wants to be able to say, okay, I got it and I didn't notice it or it was insignificant symptoms. But this test tells you, it gives you three separate indicator lines, like a home pregnancy test. I know that's only two lines, but here it's three. It's, did you get, do you have the virus active in you now? Do you have the antibodies and uh, or, or are you testing negative? So please share this if you're watching right now, if you're watching this live, this is cutting edge medical technology, showing people how, how simple this is, how easy it should be to be getting these tests out all over the place. They're not gonna be expensive when we say, look, we can replicate this. This is just an amazing thing. Look at what humanity is capable of. That a, a, a new virus comes out, we can analyze it, we can isolate the RNA, and we can have a chemical test that shows you whether, again, three different outcomes possible in this. So doctors have used this. In all cases, their PCR slash NAT, that's the test that, that they were using, matched the ProMed, that's the company that does this, ProMed COVID-19 IgG IgM rapid test, which had been taken days before. Everyone who used the test today has been amazed by its ease of use and more so its return time for results. No more than 10 minutes and often less than five minutes. So just as of right now, 
they are clear to sell. This is happening right now. Just got this message from Jacob who is talking to Call Hannah, who is behind this product with thesoberstick.com. I'm not getting paid for this endorsement. I'm just bringing to you this information because I think this is fun and exciting and it's important that we show people how easy it could be without government in the way slowing things down and that this is what we need to be demanding is available right now and the fact that this is not currently available but it will be as as I said that will be available 48 hours upon the FDA issuing their number so this is in the works right now if, if, if you go to that URL you won't see anything about it yet but you will assuming the government doesn't come up with some other evil plan to get in the way of us being able to get these tests out. You're going to see the ability to order these online, hopefully in about 48 hours. So, um, you know, no certainty right now. I, I leave it to government to screw up at everything they possibly can. And I have no doubt that if they wanted to, they could screw this up as well. But this is this is very exciting. So here we go. I'm going to tilt the camera down, show y'all exactly what I'm doing here, and I'm going to open this, uh, let's see, this is like an unboxing video, I don't do this very often, so we're going to open this little plastic envelope, and here we have three items, we have the desiccant, we're going to get this out of the way first, put it back in there for... Uh, I, get, I don't want to say trash because I think I'm going to save all of this. My my Coronaphobia souvenir. These are hard to get right now, so it's pretty exciting to have this opportunity. So also in here we have the sterile uh, pipette and the test strip device. And so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, swab my finger with the alcohol pad. I'm going to hit it with the uh, the little lancet and make a, a little drop of blood come out here then I'm gonna wipe it off so the alcohol comes off with it and then we're gonna get a little bit of that blood right there and there's an there's I don't know if, I don't think it's gonna be visible yeah there is look you can see there's a little indicator line so you got to get the blood to go up to there and then you drop it in hole a there it says a and B so a is where you put the little bit of blood and B is where you put your saline solution so here we go do I know how to work this thing even there's I think you take the cover off I'm, I'm probably gonna do this wrong and then do I need uh, do I need the childproof version apparently apparently how do we do this does it spin out now I'm going to screw this up and be like, ah, screw it. I'm just going to, uh, there you go. And then, well, yep. I should wipe first. And then what, you stab it down and it springs in? Yeah, I'm assuming. All right. No, I think I broke it. Does anybody want to, uh, so we have questions, this is a test for specific for COVID-19 or all coronavirus, it's actually just for COVID-19. So it looks like this is not working. I'm going to take it apart and, oh no, that's, that's it. That was the cover. I was being too delicate. Excuse me. So here's the actual part. You take that cover off and there you can see there's a little razor blade there. I think you just press down like that, and it did not poke through. Oh. Hmm. Maybe I did break it. Looks like it's not going through enough to actually poke through the skin. But that's where it is. That's the, the needle part of it in there. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, maybe I gotta press that in there? No. What am I missing here, dear? That can't be it. I told you to look the video back up again. 
look the video back up again. You think you pull this off and then press that like I did. And I see there's a there's a spike in there. Um, can you get... We're going to do this redneck style. You want to get me those pliers there. We're going to improvise, adapt, and overcome. Someone says get out a pocket knife instead. So, like, now we have a way that you can do this in an emergency situation if your device fails and still maintain the sterility of the operation without... compromising the test yeah so this is a little spring loaded device looks like the spring is bad I'm just gonna cut it free wow this is now a bad test demonstration isn't it this is how to butcher a test demonstration right how not to do this or how to how to test yourself for chronos right there it is all right so there's the prick okay. coming out but now it's not this now i have to push it in so i don't get the smooth spring i actually have to push it into my finger and there we go all right now we're back in business so now we swab this with the paper towel so that the bit of blood that has the alcohol comes off. And then squeeze it out some more. Let's see, what am I looking at here? All right, and then we're gonna put the pipette up to that. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of blood into that until it fills up. Okay, you're supposed to suck it up with this thing. Oh, do maybe more gently. All right, so there we've got more than enough blood to put into the test. Now, let's see, I wanna get this shot right in on the test strip itself. And we're gonna put the blood there onto the test element in hole A. And then we're gonna open up our saline, and this is a little bit improvised here. Say it using nasal spray. So I guess we should. Uh, it's, yeah, as long it. as it's 0.9% saline, it's yeah. good. So as long as we just. Two to three a, drops. There's three drops. And so what that does is that pushes the blood across the test strip. And you can see it going already. And what you're going to see there is those lines. I guess I should keep it horizontal, yeah. right? So if it. If you get a line at M, that's a test positive reading for active virus. If you get a line at G, that's for the antibodies, and C is for negative. So let's go ahead and start the timer here. Make sure we give this a full 10 minutes. Okay. So starting the stopwatch. And... Uh, like it said in the, uh, you know, sometimes it takes as little as five minutes, and it looks like it's already going up past the M line. Although we're going to be careful and make sure we give it the uh, the full time to develop here. But this is it. This is this is it. This is what they're telling you. They can't get you. This this is the, as, as fancy as they make this out to be. This in and of itself is not revolutionary technology. This is something that you know, we, we've had available and that we don't have it available right now, readily available for everybody who wants it is, I mean, it is, it is criminal. The fact that this technology is being kept from people under the guise of government having to make things safe, it is actually making us less safe. It is making us more vulnerable by not getting this information out. And I was actually a little bit surprised to hear uh, my friend, Dr. Mary Ruert, who I got to interview uh, yesterday for, for Adam versus the Man. I encourage everybody to check that out for a, a really great perspective 
uh, from Dr. Mary J. Ruart, R-U-W-A-R-T dot com. And her emphasis in, in, in that interview in understanding this about testing, that, you know, we need to be able to get this testing out. If, if, if you can't see who has it and who doesn't, you're, you, you don't have a means of understanding or tracking or treating effectively. And the uh, inability that we've had to respond and get these tests out really has been criminal. So we've got the time running. We're, we're two minutes in. And, and while we're waiting for this, it looks like we're, uh, we're about halfway up. Literally Keep it level. everybody is yelling at you to set it down and leave it be. Set it down and leave it. All right. That is the only comment you're getting. So please set it down and leave it the hell All right. Alone. So we'll let it go. And uh, I'll just watch it. It looks, it just keep, keeps creeping across here. Doesn't look like there's uh, any positive indication yet. So you wanted to share some things while we're talking. Yeah, that I saw. So I was looking up um, the COVID-19 home test kits. And all I've seen so far is that two days ago on AP News, it was it was said no COVID testing at home yet, but quicker options coming. That was published two days ago. Right. Someone's making a like a microwave sized box thing that's sort of supposedly 45 minutes, but still going to be well, the, grossly underserving demand. The FDA supposedly has not approved any of them, and that's what they keep putting out there. Um, there was LA authorities are suing a company for illegally selling at home test kits. That's, yeah, that's, that's so dangerous. I mean, that that's insane that when they don't have an answer, they're saying that no answer is better than you deciding for yourself. Anyway, other stuff in the news you wanted to get into? Um, that was pretty much it. Uh, six hours ago, Welsh NHF staff, I'm still looking up to see what that stands for, with COVID-19 were given wrong test results and told that they didn't have it and they were all infected. Yeah, so that is the danger with this, um, and, and and I don't know what the reliability is with this test. And again, we want to see it get out into the field. You know, it, it's better to have people responding, getting these things out, than than not having the option at all. Uh, but yeah, the, the danger is that, that you can get false negatives. And what they're showing is that the tests that they have been using that take uh, a, a minimum of two days is from what we saw with those tests, the, the, the really re reassuring ones that they send to the lab and they know that they're still one third false negatives. And this is responsible for this data point that we have now that you could get reinfected. And this was, I covered in the show today, uh, a couple hours ago, really, really important point where just a little bit of perspective can show you how badly you're being manipulated with the fear in this, how a single data point can be taken out of context. So when they say we have evidence that people might be getting reinfected, that you can get over this and have the antibodies and then how it doesn't behave like a regular virus, well... If a third of the tests are negative and you take 100 patients who have tested positive and then you test them at two week intervals, you test them two, week later, two weeks later with the same test, a third of them are going to test negative with false negatives. You get now another two weeks later, a different third of them are going to test negative with a false negative and it's going to look like people who tested negative here and then positive there if they had it the whole time because they were, you know, people who actually had the, the disease in a, in a very severe way where it can last. And this is why the generally accepted wisdom now is 14 days uh, from from symptoms that you're contagious. And they, but they, they can scare you into thinking that it could be more than that than than. Oh, well, we got to keep you locked down indefinitely until we figure out everything. And, you know, one of the things that's exciting about this, too, is that you can get tested for antibodies. And you can know if you've had it and gotten over it, and you can say, look, I'm not, I'm, I'm never going to transmit it. I'm never going to get it again. And, and there's, you know, and Dr. Mary Ruer takes issue with the term herd immunity. But there is this sort of dynamic of, uh, you know, if enough people have gotten and gotten over it and don't have to worry about it anymore, at least they know, too, that they cannot be carriers or transmitters and give it to people who haven't had it or who might be vulnerable. So we are uh, five minutes and 40 seconds in, and it looks like a very clear negative test result. We'll go ahead and, and, and hang with you guys. Let's see if we get that in focus there. No. Uh, pretty clear line on the C, which is a negative test result. Kind of disappointed. I was hoping that I, that I had that I had antibodies and I couldn't worry. I, I don't have to worry about it. But we'll get, we're going to go ahead and give this uh, the full 10 minutes and make sure and answer any questions that we can 
for for anybody watching right now. So um, Stick EC commented that a certain portion of tests were found to be contaminated with it. Contaminated with it. Mm -hmm. So false positives. I, no, like contaminated. Like I don't know, someone sucking on the test, or I don't. I don't know. I'm just giving you a comment, sweetie. Yeah. You're looking at okay. me like I know. No, no, and, and again, just even if that's the best we're capable of, we need to know that. If the, if there's a huge number of tests that are contaminated and and are, are given false positives or false negatives or whatever, but from from what I've seen, what looks like reliable data. Big caveat when there's so much manipulated data around here. It looks like there's um, there's just so there there there. If if what we're getting is bad tests, everybody deserves to know how good how reliable they are and be able to make decisions based on that. And again, that was another one of Dr. Uh, Ruert's points that an informed public can make that decision for themselves and she's 70 years old she goes out to buy groceries like it's no big deal she wears a mask and she use uh, wears a mask and she uses hand sanitizer so she feels that her risk is negligent or negligible at that point and uh, not negligent but that that's yeah that's that's what they want you to think they want you to think that everybody's negligent if you don't go out and you're not doing that that full protection if we could just get these tests out and we can and what this is another big silver lining in all of this is I see you know people becoming a little more germ conscious uh, ger yeah I'm, I'm I think I, I've always been a little bit on the germaphobe side and now it's like oh cool everybody's getting up to my level well also with the public scrutiny being brought to this health crisis again a relatively minor one in the scale of even global pandemics uh, we're seeing that we can do better. I mean, imagine you get uh, you know a, a test like this for for any other host of diseases at home, and you can be able to to get better treatment as a result. Just that we could have this out there. Who knows what's going to come out of the vaccine research out of this? And of course, I'm 100% against forced vaccinations, but they do have a role, and what they are going to be is going to be uh, you know maximizing their value to the world if we have better information if we have government out of the way. So uh, anything else you wanted to cover here, dear? We've got just about a minute, and we're going to wrap this up unless anybody has any specific questions about this. I encourage everybody to check out the website, thesoberstick.com. Yes, um, Jacob posted it too. And um, Jacob Clark also uh, made a comment about the contaminated test and said it was contaminated snot tests. Oh, that so that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. this is this is sort of, and actually it's funny. That's why I was confused. So, yeah, about they licking them. Yeah, like? interesting question though. This is a lot more reliable if you think about it. Then uh, you're gonna drive up to a test site in a car, and I've seen the videos. They stick you know a swab in your nose, and then they and then you drive off, and it's in the open air. And one of the things in the instructions for this, and and yeah, it, 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 you you could get false uh, false negatives here, but that you would have. Um, it says avoid strong wind or even an intense air conditioning in the area. So any other questions or, or anything else you want to do? Oh, Ben Heckman says freedom masks would be dope. We're thinking about that. Get the freedom logo yep. on a mask or even just bandanas. I think bandanas are going to be more convenient uh, than, than a mask. Although I have, I haven't, is this, the, is it, I, I kind of go back and forth on this. Like if, if Dr. Ruward is saying, Hey Adam, for the time being, this is her advice to me. You know, for the time being, it would be extra polite of you if you're around me in a grocery store to be wearing a bandana or a mask of some kind. I'd be like, okay, well, then I'll do it. Uh, for me right now, that's you know, I wear a bandana when I'm working outside here anyway. Not a big deal. Tie it on. Pull, pull it over my nose if I'm in, you know, the vicinity of people in a store getting within six feet or whatever the case may be like that. But do we want to do this? I, to me, this is, let's make sure the Libertarian National Convention happens, that we're over this. You, you can't gather, we're going to arrest you for paddle boarding or for jogging and all this nonsense and say, look, we as a market, we as a people, we the Libertarians can come out, we can get these test kits out. And look, we're over 10 minutes and now it's even more clear absolutely clear uh negative on that kind of disappointing but nice to know at least for the time being i'm not a carrier and i can practice uh good hygiene and, and be generally confident that, that i'm not a carrier if i'm not around someone who who is but um you know it, it is just it, it it is so frustrating to see 
America, the world, but America in particular respond to this coronaphobia crisis because that's what it is. It's a crisis of fear of 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 just overblown threats and 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 confu- deliberately misleading information designed to rip you off. Remember, 86.3957% of all statistics are total bullshit made up to manipulate you and nowhere is that more obvious than in America right now with the coronavirus. And if we can say, look, we're not going to buy any of your restrictions. This is all bullshit. This is all nonsense. You're just trying to manipulate the economy. You're you're trying to increase your power as a government. You're you're trying to impose martial law, restrict individual rights. We don't need to do that. The market can handle this better. Individuals can handle this better. We can get these tests out. They are easy to do at home. Even if you screw it up, even if you have to take the damn thing apart to draw a little clean blood and get get the little the little needle into your skin. This is so easy that government is making this hard and people are seem to be dying as a result. This is insane. We absolutely have to stand up and say as libertarians, we can have a national convention in in person. We can do it safely. We can do it with negligible risk to anybody's health. We can provide masks, masks and gloves and mechanisms for social distancing like they did with the Louisiana State Convention. They had one person per desk and had them spread out. We got to have a giant hall. We got to do it outside. You know, we're not going to let the government use fear to stop us from going about our lives so i i'm really encouraging everybody if you can uh check it out get tested no practice uh, appropriate social distance not social physical distancing practice good hygiene so that we can handle this thing with confidence and resist martial law do not be slowed down by this thing at all so the website there is the soberstick.com anything else before we wrap this up dear um no all right Thanks for tuning in. Peace and love, y'all.